Hi everyone, welcome to Court Farm Chickens. Today we're going to be looking at how to look after your ducks, um, how to create a pen that enriches their natural behaviour, makes them happy, stops them being bored, and uh, looks nicer in your garden. Okay, so here we have our black East Indie ducks. Uh, they're all hiding in there because obviously I'm in their, their pen. So <clears throat> I've already done a video on basic duck setup, which I use the same breed. And uh, if you have a look at that video, I will put the link up here. If you have a look at that video, you'll see they're on grass, they're on mud, and it's the basics of what they need to be able to survive. Uh, this one, we're gonna do uh, a little bit more sort of involved, a little bit more in depth. So we've just put this in. So we've got this now on hard standing. Um, now, the argument between having them on grass or mud and hard standing is they make one hell of a mess on mud and it very quickly becomes a swamp and you have to move the pen around, change it, you constantly have to turf up the soil, that kind of thing. On hard standing, you have none of that problem. So they've got their food, they've got their water, um, and you'll see the water is relatively clean. Uh, whereas if they were on mud, that would now be full of mud within a day. So the ducks now don't have the earth to chuck in the water and making it dirty. So that's nice and easy for the human. And the hard standing means you can jet wash this, hose it down, sweep it out down the drain. That's great. It makes it a lot easier to look after from your point of view, from the human's point of view. However, the ducks are bored to tears because they now can't exhibit any of their natural behavior. And this is when behavioral problems start coming out with the ducks fighting, uh, them being disinterested, um, shouting a lot, a lot of noise. Um, and they can also get ill from it because they get wet and they're not really interested in doing anything. They just sort of sit there in the wind and, and it, it does, their, their boredom sort of does lead to sort of respiratory issues and things because they're not really looking after themselves. Oh, so there they are. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna shut them in here so they're out of the way. Um, and then we're just gonna go through how to make this very boring plain area a little bit nicer for them. Okay, so the first thing we're gonna do is remove what we've got in here. So we'll pick the food up, we're gonna tip the water out, um, give the whole place uh, a nice clean up um, sweep it down so that we've got a nice clean base uh, for what we're, we're going to do. Okay, so you'll notice from that, just having the clean up, how important it is to have a drain might not be an actual drain like this one but somewhere where you can sweep things too so when you're doing this and you can put hard standing in um, think about the way your garden flows because that's the way all your crap's going to go all your water and everything is going to go so that's your first thing to think about um, where how are you going to clean it it's the most important thing how are you going to clean um, think of that at the beginning rather than later and it will save you a hell of a lot of hassle okay so now we've got the area prepared um, what we wanted to create is a bit of hard standing and a bit of soil. So think about how you're gonna do it and how you're gonna clean as I was just saying. So you don't wanna do anything too close to your door. You're gonna want that kept as hard standing. So think about dividing your pen into soft and hard standing. So why do we need soft and hard standing? When ducks are just on soft standing, they turn into a swamp, as I mentioned, and then it's not good for them either. They, they, their natural way they feed is to dig and they filter feeds. Um, on a duck's bill, they've got ridges going all the way along. They fill their beaks uh, with wet mud um, and then they filter it in the water. All the mud gets washed out and it leaves behind any vegetation or insects, larvae, that kind of thing. That's how they feed. When you've got um, food that we feed them, sort of like this stuff, the grains, that's fine for their diet and nutrition, but it's not quite how they feed naturally. So that's why they fill their water source with their own food. Um, when you've got them on complete hard standing, it's nice and easy to clean, but they now can't do any of this filtering and they're bored. If you have them on complete soft standing, they do too much and then it turns into the swamp. 
So you have to have a happy compromise. So you need a bit of hard standing, which you can nice and easy clean, and a bit of soft uh, standing so they can do these natural behaviours and have a play. Everyone will be happy. There's a happy compromise between cleanliness for you and the well-being of the duck. So what we're now going to do is get some wood and section off this area. So that's the house, that's where they're sleeping. So I'm going to put a wooden batten across here to separate that area and then they can have all their um, stuff in there that they're going to forage and everything in. So we'll start that now. So we have a standard sort of two by four. Um, you don't want this too high because the ducks won't be able to get over it and then you've got to put ramps in, uh, creating more work and expense for yourself. You also don't need this too deep. They're not going to dig down too deep. You just need it enough that you can get your soil in there. I think you don't want to be increasing your costs and, and labor by making things too deep um, for the animal. Okay, next thing you want are some standard house bricks and we're going to put them in this area sort of randomly dotted around uh, what this does is it stops soil and things that you're putting in here all merging together um, it creates it harder for the ducks to dig through it all uh, making it more challenging and keeps them interested for a lot longer doesn't matter how you put them in just randomly put them in any sort of pattern doesn't matter as long as you're breaking up the area okay so that's your first thing you're putting in soil now you want peat free compost something like topsoil it's already too wet it's too claggy they are going to make this wet anyway uh, but you don't want to start with a mud so any basic sort of peat free compost um, is absolutely fine Okay, so there we go. So it doesn't matter if some of the bricks are buried because the ducks will find them as they're digging down uh, and then have to go a different way. So it just, it just makes the whole thing more interesting for them. Next thing you want, wood chips. Bark chips, whatever you call them. Um, stuff you put around your sort of borders and things, wood chips, bark chips, it's all good. Um, what this does is it encourages insects and things to sort of bore into the rotten wood, that kind of thing, that the ducks can then sort of break open that wood, forage in between and find. Okay, the next thing you're going to want is some plants in there. Now, you have to be a bit careful with what type of plants you use. You don't want anything with berries, you don't want anything with big soft leaves, because the ducks will just eat these, and potentially they could be poisonous. What ducks love, is um, things like heathers, that kind of thing, um, shrubbery, they absolutely love it, lavender they can't get enough of, lavender's like catnip to ducks, so we're going to get some of them now and put them in, scat them around. Okay, so next thing you're going to want is gravel. Ducks love gravel, they love picking it up, they love clearing through it, they love throwing it in the water. So we're going to put a gravel pit here, just going to use some more bricks again um, to do this. Put the gravel in and then this is an old cat litter tray, we're going to use this as a secondary water source, uh, which I'll explain more on that in a minute. So just use bricks or wood, however you want to do it. Put your gravel in, put your water source next to it, you don't have to box it in, but I've got the bricks, so might as well. And then you've got these grass, as well as your um, shrubbery type plants, ornamental grasses, um, they love that, they love to rub on it, they love to sit in it, they love to forage for it for little flies, that kind of thing. So. It's I will add a little bit more soil in the back here, but you get the idea. Um, so then, you've got this water source here now. So all of this 
stuff they can use this water um, to forage in and filter feed using that water and then you've only got that small amount there that you need to get rid of and change every day they haven't filled the big water with all the stones wood mud and all the other types of thing so you want grasses like this small shrubbery plants obviously these will grow um, but that's the sort of plant you want nothing big and leafy okay and then their food can just go go anywhere really so we've got to go back through it so we've got the the earth the plants and the wood chip and then we've got uh, a sort of playing area we're gonna have some water grasses and the stones all separate how long this stay separate with ducks who knows but that's why i've kept it small and easy um so you can get in it i mean if it gets all muddled up it doesn't really matter it's just aesthetically like this um but you can now keep it in that area while still hosing down your hard standing uh, you've got the larger water over the other side as i said so that it's all just enough away from that that they're not going to muddy it too much and they do have the closer water for doing that so we'll fill up these waters now and then we'll let them out okay so the other thing obviously that keeps any animal interested is food so what you can do is in your small water source you can even do this in your big one but it's easier in your small one um, chopped up veg peas especially are a favorite of ducks if you sprinkle some of this into the water then they will bob around on it they will it, it, it sort of simulates when the if, when you see a duck <clears throat> and its head goes down and tails in the air because it's it's grabbing that vegetation under the water so uh, you, you can replicate that by putting veg in there the other thing you can do not every day by any means, but as a treat. Um, you can go to your pet shop and get mealworms. Uh, you see, this is where people are squeamish. Might get complaints, so that's your mealworms. Now, I'm gonna sprinkle all these all over like the wood chippings and things and the dirt where the, uh, the, the bug will hide and then it gives the duck something to find. If you're gonna do that with mealworms, it's very, very important in the UK. Other countries' laws might differ, but in the UK, you have to use live mealworms for feeding pet birds you can't use dried ones if you do use dried ones they have to be sourced from the uk so if they're bred and farmed in the uk then you can use dried ones um, but they are hard to find and sometimes they don't even put that on the packet and they're more expensive most dried mealworms are site that you um, you get fat balls and, and get packs of them to feed to your wild birds are from china China farms these mealworms on human waste. So the dried mealworms will be full of human waste, which your pet duck will then eat, and that bacteria will go through into the egg, potentially. So not only do you not want to be doing that, because you don't want that kind of thing uh, in your egg, um, it's actually also illegal to do it. It is completely legal to use dried mealworms because of that um, cross-contamination of human waste. So bear that in mind, always use your live ones. So, let's get sprinkling. Just throw them all around so the ducks have got something to dig. Now, the mealworms will bury themselves and things, so it, it will last quite some time. But um, obviously, it's expensive, so you don't want to be doing that every day. Okay, so just to run back through it, then you got your house. Uh, now, your house, I didn't mention the house at the beginning actually. I made this one, but you can buy plastic ones. Duck houses have to be on the floor, they can't be up like chicken coops, got to be on the floor. Uh, ducks struggle going up so you've got your house which is your nice dry area with your hay um, you want your hard standing because it's easy to clean um, and, and, and ducks do like to sunbathe as well but hard standing alone is boring so then you want an area of soils stones grasses uh, plants wood chippings that kind of thing that the ducks can forage in now how big you do it is up to you there's no right or wrong, it's just the more of that, the more cleaning. 
bear that in mind. So the more of it, the happier the ducks will be, but the more cleaning you'll be, uh, the more cleaning you've got to do, and if you don't keep up with that cleaning, then the unhappier the ducks will be because they'll get sores on their feet and things from living in wet filth, a bit like trench foot. Um, and you've got your two water sources, your main one away from all this, and your smaller one that they can muddy and it's nice and easy to clean. Remember your sloping, remember some kind of drainage, even if it's not a drainage, it's just a, a large area, a field or a soak away, something your water can go to will be absolutely fine. So, we're going to let these guys out now. Come on guys, come see your new garden. So there we have it, happy ducks in their much more better environment for them. Um, as I said before, obviously the size of this uh, is completely down to you. Uh, the more the better, this is just an example of the different areas. You can do mud areas much bigger, um, <clears throat> wood chip area much bigger. Um, but this is a sort of thing to do to enrich their lives and uh, they will thank you for it. So I hope this has been helpful. Um, please like and subscribe. It's really great for us. We can do much more videos and things for you in the future. Any comments, drop them below. Uh, drop me a message. Uh, always happy to, to help uh, and answer any questions. Um, we've been Court Farm Chickings. We'll see you on the next one.